Hey, this is Noel from The Drawing Room, and here are three quick methods for applying a dirty movie texture to your comps. Okay, method one, uh, I learned from my friend Chris Roth at the other house probably a decade ago, okay, and involves this piece of newsprint, this scan of newsprint that he gave me, which is 2550 by 3510, so quite large, okay? And uh, here, if I double click this, you'll see if I zoom in on it, it's just like a, a scan of newsprint. It's got some dark areas and some lighter areas, and it's got these kind of dark splotches in here of various sizes, okay? So check this out. If I take this and I drop it, if I make a 1920 by 1080 comp, right, a normal kind of comp, and I drop this newsprint onto there, okay, it's much larger than the comp size, right? So all I need to do is make a position keyframe by option P clicking, and uh, I'm going to now option command click on that to make a hold keyframe. You could also uh, toggle hold keyframe by right clicking. Okay, these are all Mac uh, commands. And I'm going to use page down to move two frames. And I'm just going to move this to a different spot. Okay, and I'm just going to do this and make 12 frames. I'm going to move it two frames and go to a different spot, two frames and go to a different spot, etc. And it doesn't really matter, I don't think, where the frames are exactly that you choose. Uh, I like to work on the twos, but again, you could make a, you know, a slower or faster grit. Um, okay, so there's, uh, here, so we're at 24, I'll make my final keyframe, and it really didn't matter. And here, I'll play that down for you so you can see what I just did. Right? And so you can see already it's starting to build something that looks like what, you know, like a dirty, scratchy kind of thing on screen. Okay, so in order to make this even closer to what uh, I think you want, you want to apply a couple of effects to the newsprint. First of all, uh, you want to apply a black and white to it so you can make it into you know, a, a, an image that has either black or white luminance values, I believe. Uh, you could leave some gray in there. But then the next thing to do, uh, and pardon the construction noise from the office next door, is um, we're gonna go to effect color correction and apply a levels. And here's where you can really adjust your contrast a lot. I would probably crank the white level uh, to past even the edge of the shoulder here to get like a fairly white background and then the same by pull the black up maybe and then basically you want to adjust this sort of middle the middle okay and depending on what you want you might want it to be mostly just white background with little black flecks okay so in that case you'd kind of pull this middle value closer to the black and you could always pull the black up to make the black flecks even darker all right so you want something, I don't know, maybe like this, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, and uh, you can see I still have a bunch of the gray value kind of left in there, which is nice, or you could get rid of that by cranking this white up even more and just making it really like basically a black and white uh, grit map. And I think you could just see here that it's already completely working. If I were to, you know, loop these 12 keyframes now and very simply by option clicking on the stopwatch and typing lowercase l o o p no space capital o o u t loop out and then open parentheses close parentheses with nothing in it and then click out of that or hit ret uh, enter rather uh, now these keyframes will just go on uh, looping forever in my comp okay so if i have a nice long comp of that and i take just say uh, I want to just say I have this photo of Martin Luther King and just say I have that in a comp here, okay? And uh, I wanted to apply like an old, you know, make it look like old newsreel footage or something. And I would just take my, my comp one, which I can call grit loop or whatever. Oops, loop, okay? And I could take that, pardon the noise, and drop that on top of my Martin Luther King photo, right? And now just use a track, I'm sorry, use a, a transfer mode to... Uh, drop out the white, right? And now here, now we've got this nice little dirty loop. So that's just a really easy method for creating texture. And I will give you the newsprint JPEG so you have that. Uh, I'll put a link to it in this video. Uh, so yeah, so you can always do that. And I do want to say that that's how I created uh, the really quick looping texture for uh, this piece that I made uh, for uh, the School of Motion Real Refresh contest. The second method is also really simple and quick, and it uses fractal noise. So let's make a new comp and call that fractal noise. Uh, fractal noise, okay. And let's make a new solid, and we'll make sure it's making it the comp size. And uh, I think white's fine, okay. And then we'll go up to effect, noise and grain, fractal noise, right? 
Okay, and then fractal noise looks kind of complicated when you first open it up. There's a lot of buttons and things, but we're really only going to work with two different or three different <clears throat> three different properties of it, so it's not so bad. So first of all, uh, we want to crank up the contrast, okay? Because we do really want to get this to be kind of like black and white, basically. And then what we'd like to do is, if you want a white background with black dots, you would kind of raise up the brightness until it uh, looks something like this, for example. Or if you, I just undid that. If you want a black background with white dots, you would kind of lower this until it looks kind of like that or whatever, okay? But just because we used black uh, dots on a white background for the other example, let me show you what that's like. So I'm gonna crank this up, okay? We'll get this to a pretty good point, all right? And uh, then what we're gonna do is go into the transform here and go to scale. We just wanna kinda crank this down a little bit. I mean, depending on how big you want it to be. I'm gonna leave it about there. You might want it smaller or bigger, I don't know. But now you can also adjust your contrast if you want it to be heavier or lighter. Like if you want uh, fewer dots, then you would kind of crank this down. And if you want more, you would kind of crank it up, right? So it depends again on what you're going for, but maybe something like that's a good compromise, okay? And now to make this move, it's quite simple, but we're gonna need another expression. So if you see here under evolution, uh, and then you twirl down under the evolution options, you'll see that there's a random seed. And if I kind of just adjust this, you'll see that even with my adjustment, it's basically doing what I want there, right? So this is the value we're gonna concentrate on, okay? And so I'm gonna option click on the random seed, okay? And now I'm gonna use two expressions. I'm gonna kind of put them in a backwards order here to explain them. The first one I wanna use is time, okay? And time, what that does is it just takes the value from the composition. As this plays down, when it gets to one second, this value would go to one. And when it gets to two seconds, this value here would go to two, okay? So it's always generating a new number kind of going in order. So it's sort of useful, but what's not useful about it in this case is we want something to generate a new frame for every, a new keyframe rather, or a new setting for every frame that we encounter. So time by itself isn't good enough. We have to multiply this by a bigger number. Um, I'm just gonna say times 100. Uh, and we just know that if I click out of that, now when I go to any frame, I'm just going page down, page up through this. It's just pulled a random value for this, okay? However, this is gonna look too chaotic, I think, when we watch it down. So here it is playing. And maybe that's what you want. But remember, when I did the thing with the paper, I limited it down to two, it moved every other frame, I had it on the twos. So in this case, we could do that or we could slow it down even further. And the way that we're gonna do that is by using an expression, uh, which is super useful, called posterize time, okay? So I'm gonna click back in this and I'm gonna hit return to move that down to the next line, okay? And I'm just gonna type posterize, oops, posterize with a lowercase p and then uppercase t with no space, t-i-m-e, okay? And then I'm gonna put a parentheses and a close parentheses. And in here, I need to write a value, okay? And this value is the amount of frames per second that you would like this property only, okay, to display at, all right? So if we wanted this every other frame, uh, we could posterize the time to 15 frames per second, okay? If it was 30, if we put 30 in here, which means it's 30 frames per second, we would have a new, for every frame, we would have a new uh, random value for this. If we put 15, it would hold for two frames, right? Which is basically what I did with the paper. But I think in this case, what I like to do is crank this down to something like eight frames per second for this value. And now I think this makes a really sweet little kind of stop motion-y, herky-jerky little dirt look. So I'm gonna click out of this and I'm gonna play this, okay? And uh, that might be too slow, you know, or it might be good for you. You can always change this value, like I said, uh, and make it, um, you know, if you want 15, for example, that would definitely make it a little bit faster. Okay, so that makes it look a little bit like this. So maybe that's good. You know, that's gonna depend on you uh, and what you need it for. And again, if I go back to my comp with Martin Luther King and I delete out my other grit loop and I take my fractal noise and I put it in there, right? I just hit a command and the slash that's under spacebar. I mean, a question mark. And again, I make this a multiply. It now does the same thing as before, right? Now this looks a little bit heavier, and so we could always get in there and adjust the contrast and the fractal noise if that's what we want, um, but that's, that's method two, and that's really simple as well. 
Method number three is also really easy. It's probably the most complicated of the three though, okay? It involves Photoshop layers and then a new expression in After Effects. Um, what I would definitely recommend for this is that you head over to Gumroad and check out these Kyle T. Webster brushes. Um, Gumroad.com, Kyle Webster. Uh, I really love all of them, but for this example, I'm gonna use ones from this spatter brush set, okay? They just make things convenient. So uh, in Photoshop, I've got my, my spatter brushes here, right? And I'm just gonna make a bunch of different layers uh, using some of these like fairly discreet little um, chunks like that. And I make one there and I'm gonna make a new layer and kind of make something over here and uh, maybe even lighter than that, okay? Next layer. Maybe I'll use some of these dots here. I don't know, just to make something a little bit different. And I'll make like, I don't know, five or six layers. And, uh, and then what I'll just quickly make a bunch of layers here. Stalling for time. And I kind of want to put them, you know, in different places across my screen a little bit here. All right, great. So I've got six layers. And I don't even really need to name those, okay? I'm just gonna save those now and then open those in After Effects. So I've got my grit here and my layers. And if I open the grit, okay, I'm just gonna lock off my background there, which is white, okay? And so I've got my other layers here and each one uh, is centered in its own, with its own anchor point, okay? I'm gonna turn these off and just look at this one for a sec, all right? So what I wanna do is add two expressions to this on the position, okay? So I'm gonna select the position. I'm actually gonna do this for all of them. Select the position and I'm gonna actually select the position property and I'm going to right click and separate the dimensions, okay? I think this gives a greater randomness to the jitter and I'm gonna add the expressions to both. Um, though you could just have it move, just say up and down only, for example. Um, and here's the expressions. I'm gonna option click on the Y position, for example. And I'm gonna start again with that posterized time, okay, just like that. And I'll just go back to eight uh, frames per second because I think that works pretty well. And I'm gonna put a semicolon, I'm gonna hit return. And now I'm gonna use the wiggle expression, which I'm sure you must be familiar with, but if not, let me just go over this. Wiggle, okay, and then parentheses. And I'm gonna put two values in here separated by a comma, okay? And the first value is the frequency or how much you want it to wiggle in terms of frames per second. And then the second value is the magnitude, okay? So it's sort of like how many pixels you want it to move. In this case, uh, if it was a rotation wiggle, it would be how many degrees you want it to rotate. Or if it was a scale wiggle, it would be how, many, how big of a percentage do you want to scale it by. But in this case, it's a position. So it's how many pixels do you want to make it move by, okay? So the frequency, you know, the most we could do is 30 because it's 30 frames per second. So let's say every other frame again, let's make that like 15. And to some degree or other, that's gonna uh, change a little bit because of this posterization. But uh, so in any case, and then let's make this wiggle. So we're on the Y value and this is 1080 high. So let's make it wiggle by like 850 pixels, okay? So there's my base expression, okay? Posterize time by eight frames for this wiggle. And then the wiggle is gonna move 15 times a second, 850 pixels. So if I click out of that, let's see what that does, okay? We kind of have this um, jittering texture thing kind of there, right? Which is pretty nice. And if I were to right click on this and copy expression only, I could select, I turn on and select my other layers and now command V paste that there. And now I get kind of something like this because they're all now only animating up and down on the Y with that same expression, all right? And now what I could do is just basically like select my X position and uh, I believe if I paste that, I can get that same expression in there. Yeah, I just hit Command V, all right? And now I've got that same one. Now on the X, let's say we wanna, cause it's a 1920 wide comp, so we might wanna change this. So maybe we'll make this 2000 or uh, 1500, let's just say. We don't wanna go on crazily off screen. So now I'm gonna right click that and copy expression only and select my other layers and paste that there. And now I've got something that looks like this, All right? And you know, it's a different kind of a grit. Now we could uh, change all these values and change the posterization and change the amount that it all moves and everything. But that's basically the idea. If I go back to my comp two with uh, Martin Luther King, uh, poor Martin Luther King being arrested here, uh, and I take my grit layers here and I, 
I could now move that in and multiply it just like anything else. And now I've got, I've got kind of that going. And uh, that's a different method. And you might want to you know, lower the opacity of this. Uh, or you could get in here uh, with you know, an adjustment layer as well and kind of change the, the levels of this depending on how you want it to, you know, how dark you want it to be. You can kind of like adjust these things down uh, and adjust the dark so that it's not quite as dark. Or you could change the... Uh, you know, the, the opacity over all of this here. But yeah, so you can do quite a lot with this as well. And uh, that ladder method, that posterize time and wiggle, is how you see a lot of kind of luma mat textures being applied to the backgrounds of things, like kind of soft shifting mats, um, like in a lot of Oddfellows work, like their nest piece is definitely, I think it's this method. Um, but yeah, that's the three simple methods for applying this kind of dirt and noise to your comps. Thanks very much.